Hey there. So today we're going to kind of continue talking about some main ideas of object-oriented design. And the main idea we're going to be talking about today are things called uh, design patterns. So the list I'm going to give you today is by no means an extensive list. This isn't every single possible design pattern for that. It would take a book. In fact, there are books that you can read on design patterns. Um, instead, these are going to be patterns that I've seen used commonly in uh, Unity and using C Sharp in general. Uh, the reason that a design pattern is good is it's just kind of a way for you to structure your thoughts and to structure the program that you're building. Um, if you find out one method of solving a problem that works, a lot of times you can apply that same method to different problems. Um, and in Unity, there are specific ways to solve problems that are used by a lot of different people. Uh, like I said, this is by no means an exhaustive list. And also, these design patterns, uh, it's not one or the other. They can be used in combination with each other um, in, you know, Three or four of them can be used together. Um, and it, it's just a way to help you solve complex tasks in a kind of giving you a framework for it. So the first one I want to talk about is called the observer pattern. And the observer pattern is a pattern where you have uh, one object, or uh, depending on exactly what the situation is, you could have more than one object, but you have an object in the scene that uh, watches what's going on and based on what happens uh, it will perform certain actions so it watches what happens and acts and what I mean by that is for example you could have an object that's your score manager uh, and that score manager watches what your player does. And if your player picks up a coin, then it adds something to the score. If your player gets hurt, then it subtracts from the score. So it's watching all sorts of things that happen, and it acts based on those things that happen. Um, a lot of times people use the observer pattern for things like game managers, which manage uh, how many lives you have, uh, what stage you're on, what checkpoint in the, the level is currently active, uh, so on and so forth. Um, they can also use an observer pattern for um, things like a health manager for either the player or enemies. In general, this is pretty helpful. Uh, the observer pattern goes kind of hand in hand with another one that's used a lot in Unity, and that's called the singleton pattern. And the word singleton means just one. And you would use a singleton pattern if you know for a fact that you're only ever going to have one of any one specific object. So only have one of a specific object. And again, this gets used a lot with things like game managers or health managers, um, inventory, things like that. Things that you want to persist between scenes uh, you'll use the singleton pattern uh, between the scenes. So like inventory or health that you might want to make sure that the, the game is keeping track of between scenes. And also, if you have other objects that refer back to it, you want to make sure that you are always having exactly one of these in the scene. So if they're referring back to something, they're referring back to the correct one. Um, that's called the singleton pattern. Uh, the next one that gets used quite a bit is the state pattern. And this kind of breaks your your gameplay down into discrete chunks. Um, this is a, it's often called a machine. A machine that controls uh, exactly what state the game is in. This is great for things that are turn-based. Controls the game's state. So that's especially helpful for anything that's turn-based or that has discrete states. This is the refill state. This is the move state. This is the 
you know, whatever. Uh, another one that I use a lot is called the object pool pattern. And the object pool allows you to recycle objects that come into the game quite a bit. Um, this allows you to uh, kind of free up your system resources. Allows you to free up system resources. Um, so far, what we've talked about are all pretty basic uh, versions of patterns that can be used in Unity. In fact, if you watch any Unity tutorials, I guarantee you they're using the observer or the state machine or the object pool without necessarily calling it a design pattern, but by having it in your mind as a design pattern, as this structure you can put behind things, you can more readily uh, recognize it when people use that, or you can more readily apply it to your own projects in the future. Um, the last one I want to talk about is unique to Unity, and I call it the scriptable object pattern. And there's a couple really good Unity videos about this, uh, about how to use scriptable objects in place of singletons. Um, a scriptable object in general is just a like a, a data container. Uh, however, it doesn't have to just be a data container. It can be used not just to contain data, uh, but also uh, methods or uh, functions or um, characteristics that you want specific items to have. Um, I'm going to be talking about these much later on, but I think they're very helpful. I use scriptural objects a lot in my own personal projects. So again, this is just kind of a quick rundown of some design patterns. There are others, of course. Um, there's model view, view model, um, and the flyweight pattern, and uh, the decorator pattern. Those are all things that can get thrown around a lot. These are the ones that I've particularly used before and that I've found helpful and that I think you'll see a lot of used online. So just kind of laying the groundwork here so that when we actually start building projects and I talk about using the observer pattern, uh, hopefully people will kind of know what I'm talking about. Or if we're using the singleton pattern, state machines, like I said, those show up a lot. Object pools, if you're using a lot of um, the same object again and again and again. So like if it's a shooter and you have a lot of projectiles or enemies. And then the last one is scriptable objects, which I use honestly to store quite a bit of information. Um, I built this AI system using scriptable objects that I think is kind of neat and that we'll probably talk about later on. But yeah, so next we're going to start talking about different variable types and we'll actually dive into Unity a bit here. So for now, we've talked about top-down design and design patterns that are commonly used in C-sharp and Unity. And next, we'll start with the actual programming. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, if you learned anything today, feel free to give me a like. And if you didn't learn anything, you can still give me a like. There's no governing body <laughs> that's checking up on that. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter to find out exactly when my newest videos are posted. And have yourself a wonderful day.